Here is uh, <laughs> here is the the think of on on podcast six fifty eight. What was the weirdest thing that Travis said so far? Other than he had a possessed backhoe, apparently. Um, <laughs> I just I sent a letter to a federal prison today mm. to to a famous prisoner that I am friends with. And Epstein's dead though. If yeah. you can, if you could, and he's, and maybe Zach could start going Google crazy. <laughs> he is in, he is in Inglewood correctional facility in Denver area, Colorado. And I grew up with this person and never knew he had a problem and he is serving time. And yeah. he, he did not have a bunky roommate named Kyle. So boom, and Jared Fogel is absolutely correct. Zach, my friend, I was close from, with Epstein. You know Jared my, Fogel. Oh, That's so my, fucking funny. Tell us about Jared. Yeah. Uh, so Jared is was a was, was a great friend of mine, and I and people go, oh my god, he was a this that another whatever else. Um, I, Jared and I did. We we went to more NASCAR races, more. Co- I've been to a Super Bowl because I knew him, and you know, you people say, "Well, you know, you know, you never know what your friends are into or whatever else." So Jared gave up a uh, addiction and picked up a addiction. So mm. I, I mean, and I, I would always be like, "Who wants to have sex with your fat ass?" Like I was always like, we were just pals, we were just friends. But since I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, I don't have any earrings, cavities, tattoos, body piercings, I was always pretty boring, but I was a club disc jockey, and Jared liked to party. And he would come in and hang out, and he knew, since I didn't drink and, and anything, that I would just drop him off. He literally lived six miles from my house, right? Like, And we were friends have a nice for house. years. Years. Oh, he had a gorgeous home. And he had a, so, but... Is this mid subway years? Like he's already. Oh yeah, this is subway okay. years, and I, I, but we would. He would call me. I would drop him off at home, and I would just go to bed. And it would be like seven ten in the morning on a Sunday, and it would be like, and I'd be like Travis, come pick me up. And I'm like, bro, it's seven ten, and they're like, what are we doing? He goes, I have to say, gentlemen, start your engines at the subway four hundred at the Ontario <laughs> Auto Club Speedway in California. And it's first class all the way. What time are you going to be here? I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. All right, I'll be there in like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And so it was always weird because when Jared and I would travel, um, I, he could like if he needed coffee, he could never walk up to this the the like if there was a Hardee's at the airport, I would go get the coffee because someone would take a picture of him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh god, Jared's at 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 uh, at Hardee's. And so, but there is um. Mm-hmm. There's a big, badass picture of of Jared wearing a blue Dallas Clark, Clark jersey, and we are in the Indianapolis International Airport, and it's a terrible picture of him, and he's kind of turned sideways in like the Bigfoot pose, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and and if it, it, whenever you do like the the wide shot of it, my dumbass is standing right next to him in that picture. So we nice. we fly we fly all the way out <laughs> somewhere, and. We, when we land, like his phone just explodes, like, and there's all this stuff that says, you know, Jared's off the bandwagon. He's a fat fuck, you know, whatever Aww. else. And uh, that's I am standing right next to him in that photo right there. And he just he <laughs> not just a good looks angle, like a, not a good angle. No, yeah, that's a, that's <laughs> yeah. He just looks like a fat fuck. So, <laughs> um, uh, that's that baggage terminal. Can I say yes, oh, the fact that the. The, the 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 part of his body that protrudes the most seems to be yeah. the middle of his chest. You know, yeah. I mean so, that's a good look. So, needless to say, we that is us leaving Indianapolis International. So I don't know where the hell I'm at. I'm definitely not that guy right there. But uh, we were uh, going to California, and his phone explodes because, of course, he has no cell phone service when we're in the air. Mm-hmm. And there's this big non thing about how he's a fat fuck and whatever else. So we go do our thing and then um, end up at a hotel. You know, he goes in his room and does whatever the hell he was doing. Travis married and happy went to bed. And uh, the next or that evening was the evening that Tiger Woods and his wife got into a fight with the, with the golf clubs and the car went to the ditch. And we yeah. were like, thank you, Tiger Woods. We're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Tiger but Woods. so, yeah, I mean, it was, and, and knowing, and so we kind of, 
you know, didn't hang out very much anymore when he, his co-defendant, which is Russ Taylor, um, and him became friends and he became like the chairman of his Jared foundation and all that stuff. Mm. And, uh, I could kind of see the wheels were falling off, but you know, if, if some, if everybody has a friend that has a problem and no, everybody that's listening to this or watching this is like, yeah, somebody either drinks too much or smokes too much or what they watch at home or what they Mm. do. You can never control what your friends do. And, uh, so I was like, okay, the morning that Jared's house got raided, like, you know, because this is Indianapolis and Jared is a, he lives right up the street and mm. he's a local, local celebrity worth, you know, 15 million at the time. And so, you know, your phone's going, burr, 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 you know, helicopters over some way Jared's house. And I'm like, got one eye open and I'm like going, Ooh, wow. Right. So I go to the bathroom comb my teeth walk back in turn the tv on it's probably 10 after 7 a.m and i'm like going and my wife rolls over and she's like going wow and i looked at her and i go no matter what no matter what i said they will not be here at this house and she's like no matter what they will not be at this house or whatever else you're you're friends with jared and blah 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 he's just creep damn you're getting it at home already first thing (laughs) dude so it's like so Two two days later, and I'm like, oh shit, right? So my daughter, 18 at the time, now 28, uh, she answers the phone, she goes, or answers the door, she goes, Dad, two guys in a Dodge Charger in the in the driveway. I'm like, oh. So I'm I'm like, all right, put them in the front room and I you know, put clothes on, walk out. My wife's going, They aren't gonna be here, right? There's that be here. Right? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like going, Haley, I'm like, babe, look. So I walk out there and they literally questioned me for like 15 minutes and then the last thing they said was because anybody who was in his phone got a knock like that week Mm -hmm. like any Mm -hmm. any text anything and of course jared and i would communicate and we'd whatever so the the last thing they said to me was like hey do you think jared would ever cheat on his wife and i go no i said i just dj'd their wedding like three years ago he's got two kids like he's Always dying, to, and he, at that point, they knew I didn't know a thing, and, and that was it. But like when he, I and and I was I was almost let down because, of course, you know some of the the there's a really terrible documentary right now with some chick that really wants a lot of money that was on like it, uh, investigation discovery recently, and you know you can't defend your friend that's a, a has a freaking problem. Mm-hmm. But Jared was always one of those people, and it was it, and no matter how creepy it is, like the age of consent in like um in New York is let's say 15, and that is pretty damn disgusting. But the age of consent in Indiana was like 16, but he would set up his little rendezvous using his phone from Indiana, and then he would say, Hey, I'll I'll pick you up at the airport and because I have to open a subway or something in New York. But by doing that, that's a federal crime, and that's why he's in federal prison right now. And the chick that kind of set him up was kind of creepy. His co-defendant is a super creep, and uh, he just kind of got mixed up in the wrong crap. So anyhow, uh, I was like, man, I need to be a better friend, even though I don't agree with the things that, you know, some people may be very opinionated that, oh, I heard Jared do this, I heard Jared that, but I was there firsthand. And I saw, and I had no idea this shit was going on. So literally I, uh, when he, when he got arrested and everything else, or well, he didn't actually get arrested. He couldn't go back to his home and he had a a beautiful home and his parents still lived in Indianapolis. And there, of course they lived on this cul-de-sac. And so I was, I, I drove over there and I'm driving into the driveway and here comes the camera crew, like racing up behind me. Like, right. Like, like we just won the publisher's clearing house. Like they're up my ass, Mm -hmm. like up the driveway. And I knock on the door and they expect there to be another camera crew on the driveway. And man, Mrs. Folk answered. She goes like, Oh, it's Travis. And I wander in. Of course, there's a video of me like walking in the house. I'm like, Oh God, here we go. That's like the local DJ hanging out with subway creepy ass subway Jared. I'm like, Oh, Tom, that's all I need. So I put my cell phone on his parents, like Island. And he threw his phone on the Island. And I said, let's go downstairs and tell me what the hell I missed. Like, where did I miss all of this? Cause I was friends. There's pictures of us when I had red hair and I'm like <laughs> going uh, like, dude, what happened? So, uh, 
I, I sent him a letter today, uh, just stating that I was going to be in Denver in the next couple months, and I would love to come see him because he looks. If Zach does some due diligence, and if you remember what Jared looked like, he doesn't look like that anymore. And like before he went to prison, I took him to go get LASIK because these are readers; these are reading glasses. But uh, he was always notorious. You'd see him push up the well, mm-hmm. Sharknado, Sharknado. He had a he had a bit in Sharknado that they cut <laughs> out. They had to cut it out right when I could literally, he got arrested oh. the week that, sh- that, that Sharknado can't happen. But yeah, that's him right there. That's what he looks like now. Really? Yeah. On the they're, still, they're, still, they're still getting them sandwiches in there. Well, yeah. you know, yeah. and I, I knew the, the one on the right with the Indianapolis 28, that is a, uh, whoever the running back was back in the day for the Colts, but I knew that Jared on the right. So, hmm. but, uh, yeah, so there were that, never uh, any like, nothing yeah, like and i so and where you're like this doesn't make sense why is he with this yeah. super young girl like it no and it and nothing and i was always he would since i was such a good friend uh it would it would always just kind of like well i should keep that from and, and we took him to get lasik that's why he doesn't have any glasses on in the picture mm-hmm. but uh that's great it was always just, he knew he was, was going always, to prison so he was like better get this fixed when we did <laughs> i took i took him to go get it so yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I wonder if he was thinking, you know, in every movie, the first thing they do is take the guy's glasses, and then yeah, he can't they, see it, to like, What did he do? You, you told the story like he was with fifteen-year-olds, and it would have been legal if he wasn't. So fire. yeah, and uh, yeah, well, and then so, but by by making his rendezvous via, you know, state lines, that's federal, and so he also even has child the, pornography. Yeah. And that was the Russell, the his co-defendant. So uh, he then, that's very, hmm. very creepy. Very and and it was uh, like so you're very, a child born, and he met up with fifteen year old girls. That's what he pretty did. much. Yep. And that's uh, you know so he would always be like hanging out with Russ, and Russ was a creepy <laughs> bastard. But he was like the you know the person who shouldn't be on drugs, but you got that one friend who'd be like, hey, let's go some, do some drugs. We're like, yeah, let's go do some drugs. You know, but uh, yeah. he was the, in, he was the very much the enabler. Hey, and do uh, I'd, I'd so much <laughs> rather, <laughs> kid. I would so much hey. rather have a, have a friend with a drug problem than a so pedophile. much rather. Dude. Like if I found out yeah. a friend of mine was a pedophile, I would, it'd be like, number one, it'd be like, I, how did I not see this? How did I not know? Yeah, that's like I, I'm sure that's, that's the, the number one thing you think is like I okay. What did I miss? What did I miss? Like that? Did yeah. you do that? Like when you found out, you went back through your oh completely. I, like, what did I miss? What, what there? did I miss? What? Why didn't I see this? And that's why, like, I went and met up with uh, him at his parents' house, and I was like, "What did I miss here?" But yeah, that was co-defendant, and he was super enabler, super creepy. Are his um, parents normal people? He, yeah, this parent, his mom, ma- his mom was, of course, was a school teacher, and his dad was a pediatrician, and uh, did, just the nicest people on earth. Did he have any relationships with like ladies, just regular women? Like, did he ever yeah, date yeah, or well, have a girlfriend? Yeah, oh, yeah. Or? yeah, and so of course, like I said, he was married, <clears throat> married uh, when it all went down. And Katie is a super amazing, nice young lady. Has mm. obviously nothing to do with him now. But mm-hmm. um, it was it was very weird because but she made out. Would, well, you know, at that point, at, at what cost? You know, so uh, you know there. His, I'm she sure has there's kids a number. Kids, but I'm sure there is now. <laughs> the, but the there. mental cost of realizing you were married <laughs> to someone like that, like that's that's right. Well, or the cost of realizing that I had no idea, and I was like, yeah. literally, they raided his house on a Monday, and I talked to him on the Saturday, and had no idea. And I was like, oh, wow. So uh, w- when we start talking about Kyle's mean stint in the clink, I was like, mm-hmm. my guy, you know, I got Change you on me. commissary, put you some, put you some money on your books and I got you hooked up, you know, <laughs> I can't relate. I knew pot. I knew Kyle smoked pot the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was I well too. aware. Yeah. I can't believe yeah. y'all are you technically Jared. culpable. I, you could do time. <laughs> That's Cyber. so, so funny. Fun. What was yeah. the most fun you ever had with Jared Fogel? Like Super Bowl, what did going to Super go? Bowl. <laughs> yeah, we went. We well, no, he had a. I owned one of the generalies from the Dukes of Hazard, and uh, Jared was a, a big Dukes of Hazard fan growing up, as kids my age were, kids Woody's age were, and uh, mm. 
we all went to a, a Benihana and I drove the damn General Lee to a Benihana, a Chinese or Japanese restaurant. And so we're all sitting there and everybody's doing sake bomb, sake bomb, sake bomb. And of course I don't drink. And I'm like, okay, it looks like everybody's piling in the General Lee on the way home, like whatever. Mm-hmm. And so we, um, Jared is heavily cocktailed and I know John Schneider, Bo Duke, John Schneider, like real well. And so I said, okay, so you're for your birthday. I'm go- we're going to drive the General Lee and I'm going to call Bo Duke and you can talk to Bo Duke in the General Lee for your 30th birthday or whatever it was. <laughs> and so we're, we're driving through Indianapolis and we come down to this like club district in the damn General Lee with the most famous face on earth, which was Jared at the time and in the most famous car on earth. And Jared's like, pull over here. And I'm like, and he was fun. Like he was, I mean, every, they, you know, you can roast me to the end of time that I was friends with him, but we never knew he had a problem. So, yeah. you, but so we would pull, we pulled over. I'm like, why? And we are in the freaking Jimmy John's parking lot, Subway's co- head competitor. And uh-huh. he's like out the window, like Jimmy John's and all this stuff. <laughs> he's like, he's like, Travis, Travis, hit the horn, hit the horn. I'm like, <laughs> so little like the like the drivers that night at Jimmy John's walk out and they're like going, dude, Subway Jared is in a in General Lee out in our parking lot hitting a horn and, and flipping us off. And I'm like going, Does it get any better than this? Like this is my life. <laughs> it's pretty good. So but That's yeah, we had a we had a lot Meanwhile, of fun. Jared's was, on his phone texting. <laughs> no one knows. Yeah, no one knows, like, but he's really that hey, excited about that evening. It was that hey, girl behind the counter at Jimmy John's. Yeah. <laughs> you I'm in this is, angle. Is, the tension. So yeah, I mean, it's just, couldn't see me. it, you you can watch a lot of and we ended up on TMZ a lot. You can watch a lot of 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 you know tabloid stuff. And a lot of it is very kind of you know, fan made and whatever else and we leave Brittany alone kind of stuff and whatever. But it was, it was weird because he was just a normal dude to me. But then when it all went down, everybody's like, like we followed local disc jockey, Travis Bell, because he was friends with a, here he is right here in a picture. What do you got to say? I'm like, dude, keep my name out of this shit. Yeah. I, and I, cause I knew nothing and it was almost sad that I couldn't help, but uh, uh, he had had a horrific co-defendant. And at that point, you can't do anything. It's he was a very big en- enabler, and he's what, what's his like thing now? How long is Jared in prison? And so doing federal time, like back in the day when Kyle did federal time, if Kyle got one year of federal time, Kyle would get three for one. So you get three days for one day, and that's federal time because federal prisons are pretty loaded up. Kyle, right back when you were in locked up, they were loaded. Wasn't so that long ago. Sorry, bro. So, <laughs> if you, um, but if you if you had what if you had one month to do, you're going to do ten days, and that's it, because it's three for one, three for one, three for one. And Jared had made a financial agreement with all of his victims, quote unquote. Even though these ladies of the night were already paid, then they got paid again. So none of them came to testify against Mister Fogel. And, but the judge knew that that's the game that he played. So, um, he took a plea agreement for like 12 and a half years or 15 and a half years. But by that time, remember, if you're doing three for one, you're going to do about five and be out. But she sentenced him to like 17, 21 years to make sure he did all 15 and a half of his years. Mm -hmm. So he is, um, already kind of up and over the the hump if i remember right but uh i haven't been out there in in a while to see him so i'm going to so uh these girls were they, and, you called them ladies of the night were they prostitutes they, they were, were paid prostitutes? they were paid yeah they were all paid yeah. it looks like what zach linked is that he got in trouble for what is it child sex tourism so he was going places for the purpose of having sex yeah, with people but who were that's underage. A, that's another thing of how do you prove it? But of course he was hanging out. Oh, where, oh, where's Kyle got to go? He's got to let the dogs out. Probably, he's probably got one a, of the. I'm gonna I'm take a piss while you talk about your pedophile friend. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah I mean, so like, it's, uh, you can't be you buddies know, with him like at, after he gets out or anything. You like, can't. You can't. I'm you surprised you're him. you're you're talking to him now. Really, like I I really well, think I would cut all contact with someone if I find out. I, actually, that, that's the, not a thing. It, I 100 percent know I would. Yeah, and for me, I was like going. We were such good friends. I was like, fuck. And so I have not talked to him or seen him in 
seven years now. And uh, I just had a, a printed out thing on my on my computer's desktop. It was like, you should uh, send him a letter. And so I did to this this morning, which is bizarre. Hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, that and everybody's odd. like, you know, and, and, you know, like, oh, my God, you know, this is there is no worse crime than that crime. There is nothing there's and you do not come back from that shit. You they, yeah. he will never, never be seen in public again. He, you will never catch him and me in an airport ever again. Mm-hmm. Um, but re- think about how on top of the world he was just for eating freaking Subway sandwiches. So he was. Uh, and then he, and then then he, he had just, uh, then be a he pedophile had, and, yeah. and then, you know, go to jail for it. Yeah. Thankfully, and, but his, his co defendant has got like 30 some odd years or something. And his what... code, his code of finance wife just went to jail too. So she fought it forever and just, she ended up with a ton of, ton of years too. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Damn. And, that's a whole lot of people spending a lot of time in jail for nefarious activities. She had crazy. 33 years and four months. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. The, yeah. And so they were four months tickles me, but yeah. So, but they were like just the most <laughs> disgusting, like creepy people, but they latched onto Jared and then enabled him, and he had a effing problem anyhow. Like he, it wasn't. Oh, Jared was this? No, he was a creepy f-ing bastard. Like he, that is sick as could be. Mm. But then they they were just feeding him a, a, a shit sandwich right there, and he was eating all of it. So yeah, but I he mean, had to eat it. He he had. But, uh, I mean, he was the money man. I would assume, like facilitating that's, oh, absolutely, all of this. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and he wasn't doing it magnanimously. He's doing it because he wanted to have sex with underage children. Uh, creepy creepy yeah. so that's why i had to uh remove myself from him when all of that shit went down and i was like going all right uh i'll be in denver maybe i'll take a visit maybe i won't take a visit but uh like i said if you're right if you find out some of your friends are up to this shit you have got to be like they are dead to me but yeah. you know i i i never knew he had a problem he was not that person that i knew so Oh yeah, like I don't like. There's no way you can hold someone accountable at all for their friend doing fucked up shit. You know, if they, if they encourage shit. it and, and excuse it, of course. But yeah, um, yeah, that's that's unreal that you were friends with Subway Jared Fogel. That for, that, for <laughs> quite, years. Jokes aside, like like hundred percent serious. When he gets out, um, do you think that he could have a like a career Cannot. in done no, not in the sandwich not. business not in the sandwich business it, but he he could he won't be able to be like a counselor he won't be able to do he he will have to live in a, a nowhere yeah, like well definitely not a counselor yeah no, well, he can't even no, work mean, in a know, high school he can't even, <laughs> <laughs> those are his favorite people and they can't even get a job him. at a daycare Kyle. you don't get it it's over for him <laughs> he, can, he can't like, be like, a school uh, nurse a podcast if he had a Twitter that was interesting, like a whole social media thing, like I'll, I'll say this, OJ is very interesting. I watch OJ's a podcast just called all the time. Footlong. Yeah, yeah I, I, the full six <laughs> inches with Jerry Fogle. You know, like, yeah. like six yeah, inches is funnier. <laughs> yeah, that's like, fuck. Yeah. Well, yeah, you used to take f- Footlongs or whatever else. So uh, it's uh, I hope not. I wonder I'll, what his I'll prison this, experience is came up, like. Because it, it, I know it can be tough for child molesters, but I assume he's in some. Yeah, no, he's the other yeah, ones. they are uh and I figured that out too because I was like I, I told the CEO of my life, I was like, he's not gonna last a week. Like he's gonna be dead by the end of this phone call, basically. Yeah. And they uh Inglewood is has a protective side for chobos and child molesters and whatever else. And of course he's on that side, but he he got the complete living shit kicked out of him about seven years ago and um uh, what well, probably well deserved, but you know that's uh, you know what do you do? You know you yeah. like go if if yeah, he doesn't uh, look like you... a fighter. No, hell no. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I I figured that Kyle may have bumped into him during his stint, but I guess not. So I was down south. <laughs> I was at uh, at the Alabama uh, Federal Correctional Institute or whatever the fuck they call that non Talladega place. You know? yes. the, yeah, Talladega. Yeah, yeah. It was. It's you know, it's in Alabama. Um, sure. No, no, no chomos there. Mostly no. tax cheats and and ex sure. uh, gang members and shit stuff like that. Um, right. Was it minimum security? Is that what it was? Yeah, you call it. You could call it. It's a camp. 
it's a camp. So like, um, yeah. How long ago was this stint? Fuck, it's been like three, four years ago now, right? Yeah, like three years, probably. Damn, four, man, you still years, got yeah. you, you still got street cred with that. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was in there with uh, some scary people. Um, mm -hmm. I actually, they think called them White years, Lightning by the end. There was somebody famous that was in the medium side of, of where he I was, was running like, around the track, like not, not down lower because he I came was, too but... fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. No, but seriously, though, I would watch Jared Fogel's YouTube, I would watch his podcast if he had it. Hmm. Sounds to me like he was traveling around doing a lot of fun stuff and he has. Um, interesting stories. It's I, I like hearing like the stuff you did with him, the two or three or four or five times or whatever. Like like those trips sound interesting and fun. I bet he's got cool stories the same way that like OJ does. I I, I don't sure. I, I guess it's a fair comparison. I don't I don't mean that he's as bad as OJ. I, I guess no. I, that's a fair on. comparison. That's a very yeah, he I cut mean, heads you know, off. You know those girls are fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're compensated. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just I wonder it, how they right. feel yeah. about their experience. Right, because it's voluntary. They were paid. Then they were. It looks like he paid him another were hundred grand paid, later. Hundred grand mm. each, each, yeah. each victim. So, at what point do you be like, "Yes, creepy. No, don't want to have anything to do with these people." I would watch Locked a porno with Jared Fogel where he fucked the, um, the girl from Wendy's. Wendy, like, like have some other chick dressed up as her, and I'd have him fuck Wendy. I, I would watch that. He could have. <laughs> he needs tell him that. Tell Kyle's him that. like. I would watch his podcast, his YouTube, his chatterbait, his porn. <laughs> his, yeah. I'm a big. I mean, I mean, Travis likes Jared. I'm a I huge love fan. Jared. <laughs> it's not. <clears throat> it's not that I like Jared. We were I just friends. Of course. But, but there, this will come out on the YouTube's, and there will be video of you saying that you would watch Jared. Sure. Go to. Pound town with the oh with yeah, Wendy's. we say ridiculous stuff. Well, all right, <laughs> but I want the Wendy's that's on the the girl for that's on the sign. I don't know if you've ever seen Dave right. Thomas's real daughter or nephew or, or niece rather or whatever she was. Sure, that kid had like she, not enough chromosomes or too many. I I, I can never tell which. But that's like a your ugly dog. fucking child. Yeah, I guess if you, like you want to keep throwing Rocky under the bus, okay. <laughs> who didn't do who didn't do anything to any little girls? By the way, he's just down there being a nice boy. You know, garden. I the bet house. he helps everyone he meets. He's fixed. Poor guy. No, He's just got floof back there. Yeah. Still yeah. floof. Just but, floof. So anyhow, that was my when you went down to prison lane. I was like, damn! I just sent a letter to a prison today. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, he. I. I don't. I don't think there's a lot of people driving in the same car you are because if he came out with anything on social media, Twitter, or whatever else. And I don't know that he would legally be allowed to, because of sentencing guidelines. I, uh, I, you know, I think there'd be more people waiting outside for him to kill him versus. Oh. I don't. I don't know if he'll ever be able to set foot anywhere. So. Well, it, you know, I, I think that he can absolutely. Have, you know, it's freedom of speech. They can't say he can't have a Twitter where he talks about the good old days of being Jared. <laughs> Or, or yeah. I would self-produce a documentary. I would have a YouTube channel, and I would have a podcast if I were Jared Fogle. And I would tell I would tell Jared Fogle stories, and I would keep the the sketchy stuff away from the show. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you know the co-host of that that show will not be Travis Bell <laughs> at all. I mean, someone's gotta be there for no, him. I'm. I'll. I had my friendship. I. I feel like uh, you could do you a know. themed race for him in your backyard, like cops and robbers, where he's there. The, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or he could announce that would that would be the OJ race, like the OJ Simpson race. Yeah, Every, everybody has Broncos paintball. in the backyard. We did a themed paintball thing that was like cops versus Blues Brothers one time um, down sure. at Joliet. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's time for a rewatch on that. Uh, Blues, Blues Brothers. So, yeah, I never they, understood uh, the magic. I love the, I, uh, I love musicals. I love Belushi and Aykroyd, uh, Carrie Fisher there in the background somehow, and I uh, I really like all of those guest appearances by uh, like James Brown and Aretha Franklin. Sure. Uh, so the the everything that the Blues Brothers did in their Blues Mobile, I did in a Blues Mobile. So I drove through the Dixie Square Mall, uh, I drove through the Six Corners of Cortland Avenue, 
Um, there's a trailer. I feel probably like you're out. having more than your share of fun. That might be why yeah. all <laughs> are as boring as they are. You're, you're oh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> so somewhere out there on like Facebook video or something there or YouTube or somewhere, if you put like return to Chicago, 2005, there's yeah. a trailer of me like driving through the Dixie square mall and like driving through everything that the blues brothers did. I did it. And That's we did so it with cool. no, no, no permission, no permits and had a bunch of fun. <laughs> But, I mean, we've also jumped to General Lee. We've done all kinds of ridiculous stuff. Uh, to If you ever say, well, that my childhood dream is this or my childhood dream is that, a lot of people don't ever fulfill their childhood dreams, and I'm fresh out of them. I have uh, everything that I've ever wanted to see happen from watch the General Lee fly to drive through the, the same path that the Blues Brothers drove or dr- <laughs> raced across the country in the ambulance from the mm-hmm. Cannonball Run. A friend, the sandwich pedophile. <laughs> and the friend of saying uh, you can push a foot longer, like pushing a rope, I guess. I don't really know what it is. But so, uh, yeah, we've uh, we've had a lot of fun, but we're trying to figure out, you know, now that, you know, Woody and I are both 50 and he said it right, right earlier. Do you just start living life like a pro right now? And then when you're in your mid 60s, like, ah, remember that time we were on a podcast and started talking about <laughs> foot longs, you know, whatever. So we just I, it's not that life's too short. You're just dead too long. And, you know, the people that died the, today are still going to be dead tomorrow. So I tell everybody, you know. Do you think there's something after up? this? Or is this no, a- we're, we are dust. We're done. I was not yeah. a cat before this. I was not a bird before this. And uh, I'm just a, a, a goofy high school dropout adopted kid from Indianapolis and just have a, I had a bunch of weird friends. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if it, everybody's like, well, did you know this? Did you do this? Do this? And I'm like, we are still planning weird shit to do. Because it's it's true, life is not too short. You're just completely dead too long. Like Abe Lincoln is yeah. still dead. You know, he's like. I really want to hear about the high school dropout thing. What's up? Did you have bad yeah. grades? Motivation? No, I um, drugs. Shit, shit. No motivation. Uh, had, you know, I was always like, why in the shit am I here? Like, dude, it's sunny outside. Like, what? And yeah. uh, and I was a skater kid. Loved it. Love. It was my ability in the skateboard. I loved it. But you know, like when you were a skater kid in the eighties and nineties, like the, the cigarette commercial where the kids like sneaking cigarettes in his, in his bedroom and whatever else. And the dad comes in and like, where'd you get these? He doesn't have a football helmet there. He's got a F and skateboard on his, on his bed. And so as, as before Rob Deirdrick, you know, took over the world or, or unfortunately took over MTV, you you were you were always kind of labeled as the bad kid, and so you know I could give a shit about school spirit or whatever else. And I literally the day I quit high school, I uh, just completely cussed out probably three teachers that day. Like I was like, "F you, get my transcripts. F you, do this." And I wrote like letters to all three of them. <laughs> and in my in my middle forties, I was like, you know, I was I was having a bad day that day, whatever else. And, <laughs> <laughs> and and like the dean of students like wrote me a letter back and he goes I may have not been the best educator that day and I was like oh man don't take like credit for me being a dick that day like I was mm-hmm. a dick that day mm-hmm. but like he he was an asshole that day too but I mean he was just there to do his job and I was that uh, you know boisterous stupid ass kid in the back of the of the room going you know why aren't we all somebody pull the fire alarm so we can get the hell out of here today so <laughs> but yeah I mean. Uh, it's weird because you know this year I'm a, I'm this is the fourth year of me DJing on the 80s cruise and you become a senior and so then I graduate as, and I've never graduated shit in my life I mean I've worked every minute from the day I quit high school to this moment I, when we get off of here I'll be I will work all night long but we it's just something I enjoy doing but it's like going you know you don't really hear much about kids quitting high school anymore because it's a total gimme. Like I just went to my son's graduation and there was 1,450 kids in his graduating class. And I'm sitting there going, and our last name is bell. And I'm like going, Oh boy, we're going to be here all damn night now. Cause my son was in the third row, but my daughter was born with a wrench in her hand and she's 28 years old. And she loved everything that has to do with cars. My son, you have to pay him to go outside because he's playing games all day I'm still and stuck all on night. That one with what in her hand? A wrench. A wrench. 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 Oh, gear- I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, she was a gearhead. 
And so, uh, but you know, when you go to uh, the complete polar opposites of children and how do you raise these kids because they're completely different and I'm going to go outside and, and drive around the go-kart path, I would have to pay my son to money to be like, dude, how many times, how many laps do I have to do that? <laughs> and it's just, it's very weird with that dynamic, but they were like, my daughter was not a very good student, but she got a total gimme throughout high school. And my son was a good student. So you're like looking at him and going, not too many people quit anymore. Cause they're like going, well, you showed up today. It's like everybody gets a trophy, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's, it's T-ball and mm-hmm. Kyle's team at t- Kyle's team is the champions. Woo. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think a lot of what, like schools and their districts, like don't they lose funding and like get very, in very trouble so. if people get held back. And so they're like, well, yes. we cannot let anyone get held back. Yeah. You don't know how to read, but fuck right. it. You're and in eighth did- grade now. And they did that to my daughter when I was, I was, uh, cause I was the mm. primary parent. I had custody of my daughter and they're, they're sitting there. And I went through all those little parent teacher conferences and all this crap. And as you're going there and you're like going, we need to talk about further in her education. I'm like, <laughs> ah, <laughs> you guys tell her to pass algebra one. And she didn't need that, but nor did I, I didn't need that either because mm. school wasn't for everybody. But if you're like, look at them going, damn, I got all this school this, or I'm doing this or that and another, you know, I, I always kind of fought the system, but it works for somebody. My sister, 50, 50, I don't know, she's three years older than me. She has more education than everybody that I've ever met and still goes to school, but it's the most unhappy person I've ever met in my life. And I'm like going, why are you so, you have all this stuff that you've ever wanted, but mounds of debt or whatever else. And I can't tell, you know, yeah. What is what? And so it's it's not for everybody, but the way they force it down your throat, it, you're like going, no, oh, I should go to school and I'm a dick if I don't go to school. And I'm like, eh, if you work your ass off, you may not be a dick that bad, I guess. But yeah, not at all. If you work your ass off, you lots of people are successful without school. Did yeah. you not, was not, it a spontaneous decision to drop out of high school? That a day, bad day, that morning. Yep, I was like, "Fuck this." So place. you went to I'm school right. not knowing you were going to drop out, mm, but then the day no went idea. wrong, and you're like, "I'm out of here." I'm out of here. So it, it, in Indianapolis, um, if you got suspended two times in a in a in a semester, they took mm-hmm. your driver's license, and that was Whoa. part of of uh, you know you 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 had a suspension on your driver's license till the till the new, and I had a job. And I was like, and I was about to get suspended for fuck, I don't know, doing something stupid, skater punk kid, stupid shit. Who knows what Mm -hmm. I was doing? And I just went into the dean of students. I go, well, if you suspend me, I'm going to lose my license. So go get my transcripts. And well, you know, we could offer you like four or five days of in-school suspension or some shit. I'm like, fuck that. Then I got to go sit here for four or five days and stare at a wall. And I said, no, I said, dude, I'm done. I said, there's nothing you can offer me. And that was that day when Mr. Hoagland at the time, Eric Hoagland, and I got in this argument, and he was the one that I wrote the letter to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like going, dude, go get my shit because I'm out of here. And I was gone. And, uh, you know, it's I no, I did not walk into school. I I quit my junior year. So I did not walk into school knowing that I was going to be like, oh, this is the day that I tell this. And, of course, my sister went to Hanover University, and I went to – jail you know or whatever you know i didn't <laughs> I, I was just a bad kid so i but, bet those teachers were devastated you weren't going to be around anymore yeah they were like oh the and i had big bright red hair i was a red-headed kid they're like oh now i don't have to hear that loud mouth guy in the back of the classroom going you know when the clock strikes two o'clock everybody sneeze you know i click them like, like, <laughs> you know we're all, <laughs> look at people. look at look at what we're getting away with in the 80s and the 90s yeah. so, putting drugs in the in the teacher's coffee in the coffee mm. lounge. Yes. And all which the 80s I don't think has ever never happened. happened. Yeah. <laughs> never happened. No. Never. I, I, I remember a kid from my high school claiming to do that. And it's like, there is no way that would have flew so far under the radar that you'd be telling me right now at lunch. Like if but Mr. It, Bradley it, was tripping the way you're claiming, right. He would not be teaching that stupid class right now. <laughs> like, well, and I believe oh. during the time was that they replaced a teacher's saline solution with crazy glue, and she glued a contact lens to her eye. Of course, this was all happened like the year before we got to this high school. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, but, there, I mean, yeah, there you know, was uh, contact solution so similar to crazy glue. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, 
the consistency is like, oh, this is just a little, <laughs> a little thick. To it's me. happened but, a few and, times. But, People are stupid. But Woody, but Woody might attest to this. Like the teacher's lounge, like if you ever – like they crack the door to the teacher's lounge, there'd be like a smoke haze line like in there, like teachers <laughs> in there fucking having a heater because they couldn't deal with these freaking kids. But I mean, I, you know, and that's why I, I, when I was a club disc jockey, there was a teacher that used to come into my club a lot. And I would tell her, I, I would call her teacher lady. And I would say like, I totally, cause I, I respect you because of what the hell you have to deal with now. And I just have to deal with all these drunks for, for six hours. And you got to deal with, my child for mm -hmm. you know uh, mm -hmm. you know i just education right now uh is very underrated and i cannot believe that uh, a lot of these teachers have to go through the shit they have to but that's my own opinion and uh you know from everything from school shootings to people kids like me in the back of the classroom making everybody sneeze mm -hmm. at two o'clock you know i don't i don't envy uh, i i would have loved to be, have been an educator but I don't envy their job. So almost every single friend of mine who became a teacher quit and switched to something else that paid more, uh, sure. even if it was harder, like within a couple of years, like, sure. Because they like, there's an idea where they're like, yeah, it's really an easy job. Uh, you get your whole summers off. You work until three. Uh, you, what, what do you think I'm going to be making lesson plans? It's all common core. It's handed to me. I do that. And then it's like, oh, but you're dealing with like shitty, awful kids if you get put in a horrible district. And so sure. you just, yeah, what are you going to do? Is it worth it? You're making under underfunded, million? yeah, underfunded, underpaid, um, you know, and I just, uh, you know, I, I, I really enjoy history and the things that, that have happened. And us talking right now, you'd be like, remember that day Kyle said that he went to jail and that Travis started talking about Subway Jared? And you'd be like, woo, you know, woo, let's not do that ever again. But this is happening right now, and I really enjoyed history and things that happened back then, and that's why I, I would study like television's history and, and cars and things and things that happened on shows and movies and how did they get away with that and what you know in Star Wars they did this and, and all these different props and things that they did. But then I was like going, man, I said I, I would have been a great history teacher, but then I would have had to deal with all those little bastards in my class all day long. So. Jared, Jared Fogel? Fogel, little dick, yeah. and yeah. he did Jared Fogel have a little dick? He did. We're just we're, just, we're spreading misinformation. Potentially, <laughs> no. Potentially, <laughs> what's he gonna do? Calls a liar. Like, like he's he's kind of got his hands full these days. Yeah. Our previous in... guest, I'm a very interesting man. Lots of yeah. like accolades and accomplishments and such, but randomly came up. Good personal friend with Jared Fogel. Going to see him in prison in a couple of weeks. Um, like lives a couple miles from him. They went on trips together. Huh. They, he was he Jared asked before him to go get before, during, and after the arrest. Just so we're all clear. Oh. Wait, after yeah, yeah. his friend. Before, during, and after. He's going to I see guess him now. now, yeah. They're I, hanging he out. Kinda he kind of cut ties with him. He, yeah, he, he went to his house and they years. put their phone. Did you, did you all right? Maybe I misread oh. or misunderstood. I went to he said he went to Jared's house and they both put their phones on in the kitchen and then they went somewhere else and had a conversation. Oh, I interpreted that to be with his parents. Did I miss did I misread that? Was I happening? interpreted that to be he went and had a one on one with Jared Fogel about hey man, how did I not catch catch on to this? How oh. did I not know that you were, you know, paying fifteen year old girls? That guy's a great friend. I, I would Zach I would love to have right. him in my corner. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I think yeah. Kyle I think Kyle hit the, the reality. I don't there. know why how I got that guy's on. a real yeah. good friend. That's all that's, that's what I'll say. Um but, you know. Um I wouldn't I wouldn't want to hang out with Jared Fogel. I would love to hang out with Jared Fogel. And I What would you ask him? If he's I would a top ask him, to the one question in I, front of the phone, one question, no phones. Which what are they gonna be? My first yeah. question, I want to know what kind of discount he was getting on those subway sandwiches if he like walked into one off the street. Does he have the card? Where it's like, give it to me. This is Jared. Give him free sandwiches. Just to say that. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. He had that. Uh, I know that he had. He was making like lots of money, like ten, fifteen million plus or something over the years. Like Subway took care of him. And uh, but but main thing is why? Why the children, yeah. Jared? Why the children? He was doing you know? so well with the sandwiches, and then he molested those kids. And yeah, now he's in yeah. jail. You had that episode right. of South Park. That was fun. He didn't have anything to do with that. You know, they made it about him, but... <laughs> didn't have anything to do with that. I guess it was more about him than he, he being involved. I guess I never really... No, they didn't uh, get him as a voice actor because every voice in South Park is the same. 
two guys. That's where our guest was wrong, though. He does have a future as soon as he's out. I would absolutely watch the Jared Fogle show. I would watch his videos. I would follow his social media. I'd want to know what he was up to. I'd want to know what I want to know what happened in there. Being a famous you and child, all the parents in the neighborhood. Oh, everyone. Well, he'll be registered. They'll let us know what he's up to on a day to day basis. They won't be on Twitter, though. But he's if he. I'd watch. I'd watch. I'd want to know. I want to know how he survived in there if he does. <laughs> what if he's like Jeez, excellent? Not over yet. What, not what if he gets yet. out? What if he gets out of jail and he's like the best Fortnite player? <laughs> he's just <laughs> <laughs> this slaughtering ninja. Like damn. he's found another way to Wait. like. This son of a bitch kids. weaseled his oh, way back in to be game. around yeah. kids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's just doing what he can. Yeah, well, he found I, I don't. I don't think he's going to get another job as a food. Actually, what what restaurant would Jimmy John's would use Jared Fogel? Yeah, get him Chuck right e. back in the sandwich business. Chuck E. Chuck e. Cheese. That's good. <laughs> I've been out of the sandwich game for two. <laughs> or David or David Buster. Yeah, it could be David Buster. Oh, yeah. He could be like, it's not just for kids. Come on down. Oh, come on down and attack and me! Bring, I'm here. <laughs> I'm Jared here right would be like, <laughs> "Come on down Friday nights," and he kept, and at the end of every like Friday nights, where you get twenty five percent off our our super pizza, and bring your kids. Yeah, twenty five percent and fifty percent off the age of consent. And bring. You <laughs> <laughs> just very direct about it's you looking. need to bring your kids to get those discounts. It's the only hmm. way it works. I, I think he's not going to get hired. I think he's probably, probably not. Does he think he needs um, to work again after that? You think like legal fees, et cetera? Like, has he lost his money in some way? If he made that much money, does he need to go back to work? I bet he still yeah, has enough. I, I bet right? his, I bet his wife, and his took, wife took a took a considerable chunk, and you know, he just needed to put a decent investment in the S and P five hundred and have it compound for the twenty one years he was in prison. He'll come out a wealthy man. Nah, he can yeah. do it in eleven years. He needs to watch my get rich slow in twenty two years. Be <laughs> teach him everything he needs to know. First steps first, Jimmy. Do you know any young girls? <laughs> I'm going to set you up with free room and board for the next two decades while your money grows. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cred maxing, except you become a pedophile. <laughs> cred maxing. That's, that's part of the Sam Hyde program. Like step one is the cred maxing and then yeah, you move on. Cred max. It, 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 it ruin your credit forever. <laughs>